this coming. This new military force, a force composed entirely of the dead, is torn across the face of Europe. We are woefully outnumbered. With the help of our new allies, we must utterly destroy them. After Berlin, the zombies spiral out of control. Hitler himself calls for Operation Barbarossa to take the fight to the Russians. Instead of the Germans triumphing over the Russians, thanks to Dr. Straub's undead army, the zombies break the Eastern Front in an overwhelming fashion. Hitler is losing control of his zombie army as they turn on his own men, but the Nazi shepherds do their best to drive the zombies into the enemy's heart. During the hysteria, an opportunity arises for the Bureau of Archaic Technologies. They begin to perform surgical strikes against the regime to topple the enemy and zombie army. During their engagements, the Bureau finds and steals the technology made by Dr. Straub and Heinz Rector. They learn of the many special technologies Geistkraft has created, including how the Nazis use the technology to push the hordes toward the battlefield. The longer the attack from the undead lasted in Europe, the more time it gave the Bureau operatives to retrieve the German technology including the illustrious Elektroschnell. Quickly, the scientists working on the Manhattan Project were repurposed to reverse engineer and improve the stolen German technology for the Allied forces. Assisting the scientists in their research is our team from the Final Reich. Marie Fisher ends up in a fight with Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, when fantasy meets reality. The zombies are overwhelming the battlefield, causing our heroes to become desperate. In their desperation, they decide to reforge Barbarossa's sword in the hope that the legend about granting great power is true. This leads to the conclusion that the sword can only be reformed from the mythical location of Thule. The Bureau learns that the Nazis were looking for Thule through Operation High Jump, which was an attempt to establish primary base of operations in Antarctica in December of 1946. The team tracks the Nazi exploration to New Swabia in Antarctica, where they believe the Germans found Thule. Desperately, the Bureau sends our main characters to reforge the sword in an attempt to find answers to the zombie madness. At this time, the zombies are overwhelming allies across Europe. In the opening loading screen, we see the zombies marching through England, expressing their utter dominance of the zombie horde. The zombies can be herded by the German forces through Geistcraft technologies and be moved anywhere thanks to the army of zeppelins patrolling the skies. Our team travels to Antarctica but must wait for the transportation of the sword pieces. During the Bureau's transportation of the pieces, they are attacked by the zombie hordes at every step of the way. Inside Chapter 1 of The Tortured Path, our characters use the caravan to move the sword pieces to the nearest port because the Nazis control the skies. The caravan is torn to pieces, causing the hilt of the sword to be locked behind a door in a house in Spain. The team, led by Redu, fights off the hordes until they can use one of Straub's zombies to retrieve a battery that is locking the door. This easter egg highlights the idea that the zombies can be controlled by anyone for a variety of means. That begs the question, are the zombies actually bad, or is there something else controlling them, causing them to commit such atrocities? Once the hilt is retrieved and the group defeats the Rakitenbrenner and escapes the area, they board the ship waiting at the Spanish port. Next stop, Antarctica. Unfortunately for our heroes, the Germans are a step ahead of our team. They command all U-boats to stop any ships headed to Antarctica. In addition to the normal German resistance, the zombie horde is sent to the ship to stop our team. While Redu and his team defend themselves against the horde, a strange occurrence happens. A dreamlike aura surrounds the characters after our players are shocked by Geistcraft electricity from a stray battery. Our team proceeds to hallucinate many events, including a floating fish. But during their trip, they see the events from the first three maps. This sequence suggests a connection between the Geistcraft-induced hallucinations and Geistcraft energy itself. There may be a greater connection between the Geistcraft energy and time and space itself than we originally thought. We see Dr. Straub's demise only to see him walk away cackling into the hallucinated world. Once our team comes back from their trip, they see the pommel laid out in front of them, nestled inside a box. They take the sword part and escape the ship after defeating another zombie boss, the Stop Jagger.
Watch your language, Captain. Finally, the Bureau reaches Antarctica as our heroes have begun their investigation of an ancient cave. The Bureau begins dropping in the sword parts to our team as they figure out how to polarize the pieces of the sword. This expedition is headed by the newly promoted Jefferson Potts, who takes the role of the commanding officer of this mission. He leads Marie, Jefferson, and Olivia into the cave while the Mountaineer covers their flank. Marie seems to be the most affected by the evils in the cave. Each character comments on how the cave is starting to drive them mad, but Marie sees shadows of her brother everywhere. Did you see that? In the shadows. What was it? Ah! Not seen. It looked like a man. A young man. Get a hold of yourself, Murray. Inside the walls of the cave, Klaus's voice echoes warnings to our team to run away or scolds them for not listening to his warnings. At times, our players even believe they see a ghostly Klaus appear before their very eyes, only to have him disappear the second they blink. Once the three plates are polarized in the main chamber of the cave, the sword is assembled. Our heroes wield the sword of Barbarossa as they fight their way through the cave. Before their escape, a monster called the Guardian appears. Jefferson comments that the Guardian is part of a lost race of giants, according to the writings on the walls. Dr. Straub worshipped these people because their legend attributes them to being masters of death. Once the Guardian is defeated, the team escapes the cave, but Marie wants to stay. Jefferson refuses to leave anyone behind and forces everyone out. It is unclear if the cave or her connection to Klaus was corrupting her judgment or if Marie was right in her feeling to not let the sword leave. Easy, easy! We just forged an antediluvian sword out of blood and witchcraft while any dead jobbies were never out of nethers! I can hear it too, Jefferson. We were supposed to bring the sword here and leave it. No, we are not meant to leave. Regardless, the team escapes as the cave collapses with the sword in hand. Jefferson and Drosen exchange witty remarks as Olivia comforts Marie, who looks to have lost Klaus a second time. Slowly, the camera pans out and we see the Geistcraft energy shooting out from beneath the ice, possibly suggesting that Barbarossa is awakened or the entire world can now be influenced by Geistcraft energy. No matter the truth, the sword being reforged has massive implications that will be shown in the next DLC. Thank you for watching my story video on the tortured path. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to check out my previous story videos about the Nazi zombie storyline or some of my Treyarch zombie videos as well. Feel free to express your reactions and criticisms of the newest chapter of this storyline in the comments. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video.